What's up guys, Guns for Newbies back here. Uh, got a lot of requests to do a follow-up video on the EOTech eFlex, so I'm gonna be doing that for you today. Before we get into the video, I wanna thank all the new subscribers and people that continue to come back, uh, like, comment, and just continue to uh, participate in the whole point of the, the uh, channel, which is just simply to help out people make decisions um, and, you know, kinda not really make so many mistakes as I have when I first got into guns with just learning, you know, in a more correct manner. Um, you know, if you want to become a supporter of the channel, um, please look at the, uh, the uh, link in the description to the Patreon. <clears throat> That's something that, you know, as we're getting more and more subscribers, it's going to be nice to get some uh, donators because that's going to help me do a lot more videos with different guns, even stuff that I don't particularly want to buy. Um, so that way we can continue to bring you guys more content and the stuff that you guys physically want to see, not just what I'm willing to test. So... <clears throat> Um, getting into this video, so I recently got the screws in that fit the EOTech. So you can see right here, uh, my RMR screws did not fit, so I was not able to test them. So as you can see, the gun is clear. So right now I have the sight off. So just a quick tap will turn it on, and you can see there it is. It's a little blown out on the camera, but actually in person, it's a really, really refi refined dot. So it's actually a lot bigger in size. I actually really, really do prefer this setup. I have not shot it though, um, you know, at all. So I wanna kinda see how it traces on the gun. This obviously is a pretty nice flat shooting gun. I'm gonna be shooting some 124 grains today. Um, I have some 115s, but, um, you know, I'm not really diving into that just yet. So uh, I'm going to get rid of the rest of the 124s and we'll see um, how the site does today. So far, um, I've mounted it and it's just kind of sat there. I've messed with a couple of the different modes and kind of, you know, done the actual lockout feature, the adjustment feature and stuff like that. I think personally for me, I'm going to leave it in the lockout feature, which um, it should already be still in there. Um, site like go okay it's still on so um, I have the actual manual here somewhere so I'll probably take that with me just to make sure that I got that but I haven't zeroed this guy yet so we're gonna see I mean it is a really really nice picture I mean you can pick that up pretty quickly and that's the thing that I actually like with the RMR big problem that I had is with even though it had the the same you know kind of rectangle or square image it was a lot smaller and they kind of squared off the glass so that way you really couldn't really find it when it was in the corners and with this huge picture you can kind of you know get close on your sights here and pick up that dot really really easy and there's a lot of different levels of brightness so obviously you can mess with that um, but it's also a little bit curved on the inside so if you were to look at it this way the glass is just a little bit instead of it being straight it's a little bit curved like that so it's actually really nice and you can like I said pick it up you see how it like is in the corner there same thing with the corner here it's actually really really nice it's not to the level the sro is but it's really really nice and i think that uh reliability wise and durability it's gonna sh it's really really gonna excel there so um we'll take it to the range footage now and we'll see how it goes um i went ahead i torqued everything down to spec i'm gonna get it zeroed on camera and then um i guess i'll zero it and then i'll just do some some follow-up shots and kind of give you guys my um you know, taste because I've had this, I've had, uh, the hollow seven, uh, hollow sun, uh, four Oh seven K I believe it's a smaller one or might've been the five Oh seven K. And then I also had the one for the bigger one, the ACSS, the one with the, it had like a carrot and a circle around it on the inside. I've not been a big fan of those, um, even though they were a bigger optic. So I'm really hoping this one works out because this is obviously going to be a great, more budget friendly, but more durable than a, a SRO. And I guess that's kind of, I don't know if I said that earlier when I was talking about the circle. So the SRO, so you guys know if this is your first time to the channel, is my top optic. I have that on my Staccato P, and uh, that is by far the best um, optic I've ever had. In terms of uh, durability, I wouldn't say reliability, durability, um, it's been proven by a lot of people that if you just so much as drop them, they have a really, really good tendency to crack. Um, these have been tested a little bit more. I'm just curious to see how it traces on the gun from you know just basic um, you know, kind of dry fire, it looks like it's going to be a demon. So uh, stay tuned and we'll go straight to the, um, the range footage and then we'll come back and talk more about it.
All right, guys, so this is the after the range footage. So I haven't uh, cleaned the gun at all or anything. Get some more light over here so you guys can see better. Okay, so as you can see, a um, little bit of debris on the optic, but not really anything, really. So um, I turned it off when I got home from the uh, range. There it is. So after getting this thing uh, zeroed in, it was crazy accurate let me back that up so you guys can see um nothing really stood out to me in terms of like this is going to be an issue um, i actually like the fact that it's even more uh further back than the sro um, because for some people the sro with how it goes forward uh, it tends to cover the ejection port and that can sometimes lead to malfunction so i think that that's just another added level of um I would say, let's just say, call it a pro as opposed to added level of anything else. Um, but this has been really, really, it's really, really hard because I have bought other optics even more expensive than this. And I'm not trying to say any names, but I just don't like them. I went away from them altogether. And that kind of started me on the Trigicon um, adventure. And while I love the SRO, I really disliked the RMR. It was a great um, optic for durability it's track record it just simply having an optic but the window was a little bit small and it really wasn't that much smaller overall than this in total size another big complaint that i had was it was a bottom mount battery so you have to dismount and re-zero your optic every time you change up the battery which granted they it's it's not something you have to do frequent but i wouldn't want to have to do i just don't want to dismount uh the optic at all in today's age with optics that are um, all pretty much very easily accessible. So this one, just like the SRO, you unscrew this, and you pop a new battery in, you screw that back on, doesn't mess with your zero at all um, because obviously your uh, mounting screws are back here. So if you dismount this, uh, has nothing to do with the actual tension on the uh, optic. Um, in terms of, I guess, let's just call uh, say likability, I really, really did start to get a great feeling out of this i didn't have that much time to shoot as as much as i wanted to um, but it tracks insanely nice just like the sro it doesn't have as big of a window i won't say it's as good as the sro but it did mimic the um the uh the action at where i don't lose sight of it which is a really really big plus for me and personally the fact that you can get two of these for the price of the sro i would place this above the sro so this actually is my new favorite optic um, i will continue to put these on i do feel that it is made more rugged and more durable than the sro so um, and i also did a lot of extensive reading on people that have had tons of optics and that have switched over to this from the sro so i'm not the only one um, there's actually lots of reddit groups and sig groups out there um, and not even just sig there's people with uh, other firearms that have made the switch to this from the sro and it's really hard the sro just has such a nice picture there's a lot of uh, detail and uh, more importantly um just uh science that goes into it why they designed it a certain way and because it curves to like the um the way that it has the curvature of your eye naturally and there, there's a bunch of stuff that they have on their website that really really is cool however when it comes down to it one of the biggest fears that i think that we all have is that we're going to pull out our optic and we break it or we get something that hits against it or you bang it against the wall or something and then it's gone, right? Which uh, obviously if you break your glass, there's nothing for your red dot to, uh, you know, project off of. And you're kind of, you know, unless you have irons, you're kind of out of the gate, you know, out of the game there at that point. So that is a really, really big concern, obviously. And I feel like this one definitely will be more durable. Is it RMR durable? Probably not. Um, but I would say, I'm sure it's not, but it's definitely a good ground in between two. Good enough for me to actually leave this on this gun. I actually plan to keep this optic indefinitely. Um, and this is one of the optics that I've been feeling the best about. The SRO for me, it's the, the, uh, the uh, durability that like if something, if I bang it up against something, am I going to, you know, is the optic gone, whatever the case may be. And that's kind of been a concern. I think this one will be fine. So I'm not really worried about this one. The RMRs have always been great. I've never worried about them being uh, um, unreliable per se, but that's also one where like, you know, if this one goes out, 
you could weasel pretty much whatever in there, um, get a new battery in there, you know, in terms of going out, I mean like battery dying, like it dying and the RMR, you're going to have to have your tools with you, put it back on dude. So that, there was always a couple of different gripes that I had with the RMR. And now I don't have that with this one. And this one, it still has that same, uh, rectangle, uh, shape, which I really like of the RMR, but it has a nicer sight picture. It comes in a lot more affordable. And I think honestly, um, even with it having a lot less glare, it makes it a lot easier to pick up in any sort of lighting conditions. Now, obviously if you're getting, um, light thrown at you, it's a different story. It's going to be harder naturally to find your optic, but you know, that's a more of a rare case scenario. Most of the times when you're using this, nobody's hitting you in the face with a flashlight, hopefully, right? That's the uh, hope, but all in all, it's been a fantastic, fantastic adventure. Uh, the screws are pretty annoying to me, and I had to wait a little bit to get those, and then I kind of lost a little bit of steam, and it drug me out a little bit longer just to use this, um, but it is what it is, ultimately. So, all in all, this has been, like I said, a fantastic, uh, uh, and look at that, I'm pretty sure if you look at that, that is off-center there. That's funny. I just adjusted that, maybe. No, it's, it's off a little bit to the right. So, I will get that adjusted, but uh, sorry to get sidetracked there. That's pretty, um, pretty particular about my guns. But either way, if you're looking at buying an EOTech E-Flex, I definitely recommend. It's been amazing. I really like all the features, uh, the way it's made. I'm pretty sure it said on the box it was made in USA. So that's another benefit. Um, and it's just really, really just an all around nice, stylish, usable, and good looking optic. I love everything about it. And I really, you know, I was really, I, I try to be truthful and that's kind of why I go back and forth, you know, between all the optics, I'm trying to cover everything I can for the RMR. Again, it's the battery. Um, I'm really not a big fan of that. I'm not a big fan of how much uh, actual window size you get, but it is very durable. So, I mean, those are kind of the, the pros and cons that you have there. The SRO is just an awesome optic. It really does overhang a lot though. And I've seen videos of like other YouTubers that have had malfunctions caused because of that. So in the heat of a moment, if you're using that to save your life or whatever the case may be, that may not be something you want to do. It's also not as durable as an RMR or other optics that are even lesser than uh, RMR and durability. And so that's another thing you have to be concerned with. And I think this is kind of the, the middle ground. So this for me is perfect. And this is what I'm going to keep using moving forward. Stay tuned for next week's video. What I'm going to do is put this up against the AXG Legion. I actually have to do the editing on that because I have filmed that as well and kind of stack up how I think these two uh, firearms went because I've seen uh, a comparison video on them. And I think that definitely, um, you know, I think mine's definitely a little bit more truthful. So thank you guys so much. And, uh, Remember to like and subscribe.